Hello my friends, welcome to part two in a series of videos on new insights into 25 vibration. I'm making this video in the year 2023 and we've conducted more research, gone back, reviewed what the research was before and we found some problems talking to clients where 25 vibe patterns were not hitting as perfectly and clearly. So something's not working as well as we like it to and we go back and, we, and we've come up with a sharper, improved understanding of 25 vibration. Vibrational astrology is growing and evolving very rapidly. We're learning very quickly from all the consultations and research and activities that people are doing in vibrational astrology. So I've conducted a new research study. So we want the data to agree with the observations. The new research that I just conducted over the past week on the meaning of 25 vibration agrees so beautifully with the observations with clients, fits together much better. So this, this is good news. We've solved another problem in, in understanding how these vibrations work. And here's an insight that we've gotten into exponential vibrations, what they actually do. Exponential vibrations can be squared or cubed, you know, it's five times five. We call that five squared. Five times five times five is five cubed. Let's just focus on the square functions for now. And so what we're finding with the first level of exponential vibrations, in other words, squaring, just five times five, for example, or seven times seven, 11 times 11, 13 times 13, 17 times 17, also three times three, which is nine, so these vibrations, 9, 25, 49, 121, 169, and 289, <clears throat> excuse me, 289 is 17 times 17, we have an, a new insight into what these vibrations mean, and here's what it is. They transfer the energy to a community level. That's what they do rather than a personal level. The energy flow is through all of the people in a person's surrounding as well as oneself. And you, the goal of these vibrations is that you become a participant in this energy flow so that you are an important, you might say, node or focal point of this team, this or community, family, goes under different names, this group that you're a part of, and the environment, not just the people, but the whole feeling of the place that you're in. So the prime number of vibration is an energy flow that is more focused on personal development. In other words, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17. They're more about just you and how you personally express it, and the square is how you express it in the context. So for example, 3 vibration, which is a trine, is a smooth flow of energy. Nine is a smooth flow in the community. That's what we always say about. It. We've known this, you know, for a long time, and and our interpretation of nine vibe has hardly changed over a long period of time. It gets reinforced and understood over and over again. But I was just thinking, oh well, nine happens to be community. Actually, that's what the square function does. So this new insight actually simplifies our understanding. The reason why nine is community is because that's what square functions do, and three is smooth, so it's a smooth community, and because it's the lowest square function, nine. I mean, you have two times two is four, but there you're just doubling, and then we call that an octave. So in this is, in any case, one of the lowest. It's so fundamental, so healing, so soothing to have this nine vibration. Now the five times five, so five is exploration, curiosity, creativity, the same things, exploration, curiosity, creativity, shared with the community. We're where you're a participant in it. Seven is quiet, introverted, deep. What's 49? Same thing, shared with the community. What does it mean that it's shared with the community? If you have strong 49 vibration, you're concerned 
if the culture you're in is shallow, superficial, inclined to glamour, insincere, hypocritical. This really bothers 49 because 49 wants this depth, this thoughtfulness spread throughout. It wants to be in a world where people are thinking deeply, can be quiet, who aren't all jazzed up all the time. So the focus is to create a world, and not a world in an abstract sense, like a large political thing, a life, a life in which you can share, talk, experience, go to school, go to libraries, go to movies, anything you're doing, and be in that lifestyle. Not just being the lifestyle locked in your room by yourself. So that's, you'll see these social awareness and how people try to structure the world around them, and build the world around them to fit it. 11 is restless, moving, and hungry. What is 11 times 11? <clears throat> it's going to be restless, moving, and hungry in a progressive community, to participate in a progressive community. So 121 is seeking to be in a world where it, it's interesting, funny, experimental, breaking boundaries, exploring. It's very unhappy, gets bored, gets its attention goes somewhere else when life is just too repetitive all these traditions is handed down. 13, need to follow your own calling. 169, <clears throat> excuse me, 13 times 13, being with authentic individuals. 169, <clears throat> excuse me, wants to be in a world where people are authentic, exciting, special. It, it seeks out people who've done something interesting, unique, it avoids being in a room with people just repeating whatever news, whatever information, whatever styles, whatever popular things are happening, just parroting it. It drives 169 vibe crazy. They're seeking people who've decided something, who've, who've gotten turned on to something, who found their place in the world, who found their calling. And 17 is empathy, interest in the stories of others. 17 times 17, or 289 vibe, is a desire to be with compassionate people, to be in a world where people are listening, are empathetic, are compassionate. This becomes the highest priority. Obviously, it'd be wonderful to be in a community that's nine vibe, harmonious. 25, everybody's creative. 49, everybody's profound and deep and wise. <laughs> 121, where people are progressive and making change, etc. 13, they're authentic. 17 times 17, where they're compassionate. But each person attunes to certain things, and this is the emphasis. This is the priority for these vibrations. So that's our new understanding of numbers that are squared. The first level of exponential, where you multiply a number by itself. What's going to be interesting, and we haven't gotten clarity on this yet, is what does that third level do? 125, 5 times 5 times 5. We've had some ideas from research on 27 where it seems to take it to, you might say, a global level, to a level beyond what you can see. It becomes, you, know, you don't have to see it when you multiply three times, when you cube it, as we say in math, uh, that seems to be what's going on, but we, we need to do more research to confirm that, to see if that's what's happening with 125. And what does that even mean? What, how do we visualize that? How, what kinds of things do people do? Okay, so that's our understanding of exponential vibrations at this point, our, our best understanding. And again, the online book, The First 32 Harmonics, I showed that in part one of this series, uh, was was written in 2012. Um, and, you know, in that study in 2012, if you, if you go down that online book to 25 vibration, 
you'll see that the person who scored highest in 25 vibration is a fellow named John Ehrlichman. And he was an American political aide to President Nixon in the United States. He was found guilty of conspiracy to obstruct justice and perjury. Um, this was, um, you know, a, a, a big scandal called the Watergate scandal. And um, when I did the research in 2012, I really couldn't figure out what the 25 vibe was very much for Ehrlichman. I just decided, well, it's got to just be latent. For some reason, it's just not coming out. Well, that's really not such a great interpretation, given that he is a productive person. He's, you know, he's a lawyer, etc. Um, so that was one of the weakest um, vibrations analyzed in, in that book. Well, now we know why. Um, so I'm ready to show you the results of the new study and show how we can see what 25 Vibe is doing more clearly. And as I said in the first video in the series, what we were seeing before was a common symptom that can develop from the essential function of 25 Vibe. That's all explained in detail in part one of the series. Let's look at the charts. The person with the strongest 25 Vibe, the most planets with the smallest orbs all pulled together, is a fellow named Thomas Prugger, using this weighting system, he got the most points, 661 points. Um, and if you're curious about the research, we have, we have videos on how to do research. I, it's a one line in the Astro Signature. It says, give me three planet patterns in 25 vibration. And we give it the full 16 degree orb. And we say, there's a checkbox here for um, the closer it is, the more points it gets. So he has the most plants with the smallest orbs. He was an Italian snowboarder. We know almost nothing about him. That's all I could find out. So we really don't know what's going on there. Just for fun, to show you his chart, there it is. Here's his 25 vibration chart. And he has Sun, Uranus, Pluto, Saturn, Moon, and Venus. That's one, two, three, four, five, six planets spreading from nine to 18 degrees. Actually, that's about eight degrees because this is almost 10. One, two, three, four, five, five planets within 10 degrees, six planets within uh, 12, within 13 degrees. A huge amount of things going on. And one of the things that's curious is a lot of the people in this research have extremely strong Saturn. Here we're seeing Moon, Saturn, Pluto. Saturn is conspicuous in almost all the charts, not all of them, very conspicuous, which is showing that these particular people who stand out are taking this need to share creativity, to be in a creative world, that it's fundamental. Saturn shows what's fundamental, essential. It's not a joke with Saturn. <laughs> this is important. It's important that we live in a world where people can explore and ask questions, not be laughed at because it's a so-called stupid question. To be innocent, to be free, to you know, to, to to be able to do these things. So Saturn, Moon, Saturn, Pluto, this intensity to um, to be able to live that life. Now we won't go into any detail detail because we don't have any biography on them. But I just wanted to point out that this kind of configuration appears repeatedly that people are pushing hard. I mean, to be an Olympic, I think it was Olympics, you know, one of the best in any sport, snowboarding, um, just kind of a dangerous sport. We've got Saturn, Uranus, Pluto here. I mean, any kind of, you know, intense activity, not necessarily more dangerous than anything else, but, you know, it's high energy, high activity. Um, and so it fits the intensity, the grappling, in that free environment, and, and it's a world. Uh, you know, there's trainers and uh, you know, programs and competitions, and but we don't know much about them. But with the people we do know more, we'll, we'll go into their biographies. Okay, back to our PowerPoint. Um, next one was a German physicist. 
um, Peter Pringsheim, and I had three criteria to go into detail on a chart. One is all these people have AA data. The birth data is from a birth certificate or birth record. Number two, if the time is on a half hour, you know, it's like 1 p.m. or 1.30. It's on the hour, half hour. I did not go into any detail. And we always need a lot of bio biographical information. This physicist is on the half hour and very, very little biography. I really couldn't even get started with him. Third one, with 631 points, you can see these points going down, Ted Wasmer, an American painter, his time was on the half hour, but we do have a good amount of bio. And because there is a good amount of biographical information, I will briefly review it. I'm not going to go into as much detail as the people who are not on the half hour, because, you know, when it's on the half hour, maybe the person was born exactly at 3.30 in the morning or whatever the time is, but maybe it's rounded off 15 or 20 minutes, and the vibrational charts are very sensitive to birth time. So to be really sure, I just wanted, like, perfect cases. But there is, you know, because we have some good information on him, a good biography, let's talk about him a little bit. First of all, let me show you his chart. Uh, Wasmer, 25 vibe. And he has Mars, Uranus, Mercury, and Saturn within three degrees. Again, there's that Saturn. Mercury, Saturn, very tight. And it's not picked up in the astro signature because it was only looking for conjunctions. But Saturn at 22 Aquarius, there's that Saturn Pluto again. So this Saturn being conspicuous, showing up with people, and I think it's because of their dedication their focus, that they made their life about being in a world that's 25 vibe, that is not boring, <laughs> that's not repetitive, that's where they can share a creative life, be in a world where they can do that. And then Moon and Neptune, and then Jupiter not far away, so just incredibly large, powerful pattern. So in what way does Ted Wasmer create a world around him in which it's not overly repetitive, you know, so specialized, doing the same thing? Does he have a low tolerance for, for boring repetition? We all deal with boring repetition. 25 Vibe actually doesn't get flustered by boring repetition, they just they just will not tolerate it. You know, they'll tolerate it for a little bit of time. They will maneuver, I think is a good word. 25 Vibe will maneuver a way out of it. They don't have to get into a fight. They don't have to get into an argument. They will just find a way. They're like fish who will just swim and find a way out of that little trap. Okay, and if they get really drunk, they swim faster. Um, they will maneuver their way out of it. So let's learn about Ted Wasmer. He produced more than 2,000 works of art, including paintings, watercolors, and sketches that are displayed in muse museums around the world. I put that in bold because here we have a person who's doing their artwork, painting, watercolor, sketches. Well, that's not a huge variety but a little bit of variety, displayed in museums around the world, getting it shared, being a participant. And to be an artist where you get your work into museums is not just about how great of an artist you are. It's about your willingness and interest to get out and be a part of the social world. He received a job from a job offer from Paramount Studios in 1941. However, he gave up the opportunity to enlist in World War II. So, 1941, the war is going on. He joins the army. Why would he do that? When he gets a good offer, they want him to, you know, do the artistic work for, for I guess, for the movies or whatever they're doing. He turns it down. A great opportunity. Because 25 Vibe does this. It's not like so 
dedicated to one way, they feel that something's calling them, that there's something to explore, there's something to experience, and it's time to experience it. The war is happening. So they will move, they will change, they will adapt. Yes, I, you know, my art is important, but we're in the middle of a war here. And it's also, you know, he's probably got some patriotism and some sense of duty, but also it's an adventure and risk. 25 Vibe is not afraid of risk. So there you see the, di the delightful diversity, as I called it in part one, always changing. And does he stay in the military very long? No, he serves to the end of the war and he's out of there. Typical 25 Vibe. They're not usually going to become career military people because that would be very structured, very repetitive, not for 25 Vibe. He, he does it, he gets out. Now, as a youth, here's from another website. I've got the website addresses here. It talks more about his childhood. As a youth, he enjoyed many sports, ranging from baseball, basketball, swimming, and, and skiing to fishing. He also sought to express himself, express himself musically and on the stage. I put in bold key things here. Many different sports, many activities. This is 25 vibe. Delightful diversity. They want to explore. They want, and their team sports. Be a part of these activities. The baseball, the basketball, skiing, fishing, the freedom of being in nature, of viewing this world around you. They need this. They need to get out of the little place and, and explore and see how, how it is. Uh, so formal training was beyond his means, so he was not in a, you know, a well-to-do family. By watching others, he learned to play the piano. Delightful diversity. He's doing it all. He's doing the sports, the, the fishing and um, skiing, all kinds of things. The music, who teaches himself piano, does some stage stuff, and he's fascinated by colors. He would sit for hours and contemplate the variations of white in the cloud formations, the sonorous sunsets. This is 25 vibe, surrounded by the organic flow of life, how the clouds move, how the sun sets. This is five times five, that we can be a part of this. We're a part of this life flow. And he, he's engaging in every way and not defining himself, not focusing himself, not narrowing himself, but to just be able to be flexible and move between these different activities. This is so 25 vibe. It's amazing. And what I also found fascinating in this, again, when you look at his 25 vibe, is it all Jupiter, Neptune types of stuff? Well, actually there is a Jupiter, Neptune, nine degrees apart. But there's also this Pluto opposition, Saturn. Um, it's actually within the orb of opposition, one, two, three, four, five planets. You've got the Mercury, Saturn, Uranus, Actually, Mars, Uranus, Mercury, Saturn, within three degrees, this is heavy duty. But it seems that the 25 vibe, even with these intense Saturn, Uranus, which can be stressful, Mars, Saturn, Uranus, they're not getting all stressed out about it. The 25 vibe is pushing them to engage. This probably also was the attraction to joining the military, to get out there, to be active, to deal with these sudden changes and, um, and the stress of it. So 25 vibe, even with difficult planetary patterns, can often handle it relatively well. And now, if he didn't have the opportunity to get outside and fish and ski and, you know, respond to this critical situation in the world and, and join the military, you know, it would build up and there would be problems. But in general, you'll find the 25 vibe will just maneuver their way to create this life. It becomes a problem when you have commitments to other people and they don't want you to do these things or they're telling you you can't do them. But otherwise, they will maneuver their way into it and do it. 
His life is 25 Um Very, very extremely so. After being discharged, so a little bit more about Ted Wassmer. Wassmer. After being discharged from the Air Force in October 1945, he went to New York City to continue to pursue his art. He married Judy Farnsworth Wund in December. She, too, was an artist. She was the former state art director of FERA-WPA, some art, art organization in Utah. That is a smart marriage decision. <laughs> To be involved, to be to marry somebody who is in the art community, she was the director of an artistic community organization. This is what Twenty Five Vibe lives for. It lives to be part of families, communities, clubs, where the rules are not strict and inhibiting, but providing opportunity, fluid, and so on. She was an artist. Um, after studying at various schools, various schools, typical 25-vibe, a lot of different styles, a lot of different approaches. They don't narrow down to one specialization. He opened a studio in the Carnegie Hall Tower, big place in a big city with big access to a lot of people. 25-vibe is engaged in the world. Two years later, he began to study Cezanne and Impressionism. He began a fan of Renoir, Degas, Matisse, Picasso, Velasquez, Velasquez. So he takes an interest in a lot of different things. In 1952, his wife, they moved to New York, a different town, typical of 25 vibe, adapting, changing, not getting stuck in one place. They worked from their home studios, they had success, and they would make trips to Europe to further their studies of art. This is so 25 vibe. <laughs> it's adaptable. It's fluid. It's changing. It's responsive. And it's not afraid to explore. It's not going to say, oh, we can't afford this. Well, if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. But as long as you can pay the bills, do it. It's, it's, it's more interested in changing, flowing, exploring, experimenting than anything else. So look at all of the diverse activities and involvements he has. Uh, then they leave New York and go return back to Salt Lake City, where they both of them, I guess, were from Salt, were from Utah originally. So again, following the flow, where it takes takes, feels good to go back. So they do that. It's twenty five five is not chaotic. It's not disruptive. It's like swimming, and it will swim back to where it started. It just wants to flow through it all. They gave many paintings and art pieces to the Springville Museum of Art and four other art museums. Typical 25 vibe. Part of a community. It's not all about you, 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 and how successful you are. You are there because of the community that you're a part of. It's all one integrated thing. And... It's not so much like a generosity of, I will give it to you. It's that you are part of my world. And if it's appropriate at this time, they do it. Um, it's humble and it's 25-5. Uh, and it's, and it's, its priority is the context in which they're doing things. There's a good way of putting it. The context, the context of the associations, the groups, the clubs, the museums, and to be able to share that in that way. Um, and the appreciation that comes back, that museum that he made donations to, honored his 80th birthday with a show of hundreds of his pieces of his art. Did he like that? Oh, he loved it. He loved it. <laughs> because you want to participate. You want to make your contribution. Not so much like me, 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 but... Yes, I, I'm a part of this. That's the joy. So then the other people that show up are Jacques Vertin, an actor. We have almost no bio for him. Carla Gravina, she's an actress and a politician. Well, there you go, right away. Two things that seem rather disparate, very common for um, 25 Vibe. They explore, they do different things. She's a half hour birth time, so I didn't go into detail. I also don't have very much, couldn't find very much bio for her. 
But one of the things I did find in the Wikipedia article on her is she was very active in films and television series, both in comedic and dramatic. There's that range, comedy and dramatic roles. Again, not an extraordinary range, but typically there is. And uh, she gradually focused her, from the late 70s, she gradually focused her activities on stage and political activism, being a PCI deputy between 1980 and 83. She was involved in a long-term relationship with fellow Italian actor uh, Gian Maria Volante, with whom she had a child. So um, the little bit we know fits. She's involved in creative communities, acting, uh, various kinds of roles, political activism, gets involved with various things. Doesn't mention her marrying um, this fellow, but in a long-term relationship, that's also common for 25 Vibe. They're going to flow in and out of things. They had a, a child. Let's look at her 25 Vibe real quick. Carla Gravina. Let's go up here to Gravina. Carla, 25 Vibe. And she has Uranus, Venus, Mars. Well, that's a hot, saucy combination. And then the Sun, Mercury conjunct. But the 25 Vibe doesn't get that personal, doesn't get that much me, me, me. So this is more of a freedom of expression. And the fact, apparently she didn't get married, but had a strong bond, that's Venus, Uranus, Mars, and 25 vibe um, is, you know, is passionate and it falls in love, but wants it to be fresh and alive and has ideas about how to keep things responsive. And the, and again, one of the, you might say, protective things about 25 Vibe is that it's not so much personal as much as it is your situation within the community. So it doesn't react as intensely in a personal way to situations. It finds a way to navigate within the social context. She doesn't have the strong Saturn. This is one of the exceptions of these charts I've looked at. And she does have the Jupiter-Neptune out here, not extremely strong to the rest of the configuration. Okay, let's look at the next one. Go to our next slide. Where am I here? Um, now, James Brolin, he is the next person with a huge biography. He meets all three criteria. The time is not on a half hour. We have a lot of biographical information, so I went into his in more detail. Some of these, I just took a little glimpse at them. He's an actor and also a producer and a director. He's married three times, but each of those marriages, I think, was a fairly long period of time. He's currently married to Barbara Streisand uh, since 1998. They're still married. There's, he's still alive. Barbara Streisand's alive. Um, and that, so that means they've been married now for, uh, what, 25 years, 24, 25 years, something like that. So that's, you know, pretty long time. Um, and he's played a lot of different roles and activities. Just a little bit about him. He has a very pleasant demeanor, very um, welcoming kind of fellow, handsome. He's six foot four, so he's got a you know, kind of magnetic, large presence. And he tends to be very realistic. I watched some interviews of him. Um, and again, you see the humility. His placing his life within the context of the world he's in. Also, he's overshadowed in popularity by his wife, by far. Probably any of you watching this have heard of Barbara Streisand. It's pretty hard not to know her, even if you're not an American. Um, but James Brolin, good chance you don't know who he is. So he, she far outshines him in popularity and impact. Her talent is extraordinary. Is that likely to bother 25 Vibe? No. It's going to help bring him into a larger community of people who are creative, who are exploring, who are investigating, who are willing to try something new. So 
At least we hope so. You know, sometimes people get very popular and they become very snobbish and very remote and maybe think they're better than other people. But at least he's married to someone who's involved in similar activities. We saw this with some of the other people. Marrying, uh, what's his name, Wasmer, what was his name? Yeah, Ted Wasmer married another artist and she was a director of an artistic organization. So to be brought into that world where you're surrounded by curious, interesting people who are keeping life fresh, keep it fresh and innocent. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And sure enough, they seem to have a very um, good marriage. They, they worked on it, but it's very, very good. He, just to give you some idea, he's done many, many, many different things. Uh, one thing James Rowan did recently is he was the voice behind uh, the characters in a Netflix series called Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth is about people who are part human and part animal. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is the kind of creativity, openness that 25 Vibe has. He's sometimes called a Renaissance man. I have a note down here. Note, Renaissance man is one manifestation of 25 Vibe, a person who's involved in a lot of diverse, that di delightful diversity, as I called it in part one, exploring all these different things um, and having talents in a lot of different things, participating in different communities. He flies an airplane. He's done that since he was 18 years old. He's built airplanes. He's raced cars. He's raised horses and cattle. He's worked in the lumber business. One of the things I said in the first part, part one of the series, regular daily work, the, the life, the spirit, the, the passion, the creativity that you can put into what you're doing um, rather than just doing it as like a factory worker, just boring, repetitive work. And also his son, Josh, Josh Brolin is well-known actor. Um, I think he's probably more famous than James is. Uh, of course, this isn't going to bother him. He's going to be proud of his son um, as a 25 by person. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's spreading out his whole community of, uh, of creativity. So let's stop here. I just realized I'm at 38 minutes. Let's stop here. And there will be a part three, and we'll pick up with John Ehrlichman. This is important because John Ehrlichman was in the smaller database. When I did the research in 2012, he was number one. Now we have a larger database. He still shows up as one of the strongest. And he did not fit the old interpretation of 25 vibe at all. Let's look at him in the third part of this series and, and a few other people and see how he fits the new interpretation. Okay, my friends, I'll see you in part three on this series of videos on the meaning of 25 Vibe.